Hello everyone, today's video is going to be a video about my setup and how I record my YouTube videos. This is a highly requested video for me and I'm actually really excited to upload this. I think because I've spent quite a lot of time on it and effort. So I hope that you like it, I hope that it's useful, I hope that it answers any questions that people have about what equipment do I use, what equipment should they use, why you never hear the piano in my bloopers and why people like to accuse me of not really playing the piano. Uh, if you have any questions then please leave them in the comments, I will reply to them to the best of my knowledge and like help anybody out in any way that I can. In the description I will have the sections of the videos and the times that they appear at so that if you're only interested in one section then you can just skip through to that. I will be taking you through the equipment that I used to use and the equipment that I've just upgraded to and when I mean just upgraded to I mean like this week I bought all the equipment. So there's stuff for like beginners and more advanced people depending on the kind of budget you have. That's everything I think. Happy Valentine's Day. I hope that you all have a lovely Sunday and I'll see you next week with a cover. Bye! So this is what I see when I record my YouTube videos. I apologize that it's a little bit dark. So in front of me, i.e. the big thing that everything is resting on is a Yamaha Clavinova. I've actually just sold this on eBay. Um, and I found out that this model is from 1989, which I thought was incredible. Uh, on top of it is my uh, Logitech speakers which really don't come into my YouTube videos but they are amazing. I've got my preamp to the right which everything plugs into. The preamp plugs into my computer which is running Logic Pro 10 and then to my left is my microphone which obviously records my vocals. So this is my preamp, it's an M Audio M track. In the back which I'm about to point to is uh, the 5 pin MIDI which is an old, a very old way of recording MIDI, as I said the things from 1989. And then on the top mic input 1 is where my microphone plugs in and then the little thing at the back is the USB that plugs into my laptop. So this is my microphone, it is also M Audio. I should say that I'm not being sponsored by M Audio, I just like their stuff and when I was starting out, they're really the only brand that I knew that existed, so I just bought their stuff. My microphone has a dent in it, which I have no idea when that happened, but it still works fine. I'm not actually gonna upgrade from this mic, I'm gonna stick with it, I like it. And this is just a quick shot to show you what my piano looks like with the lid open. And just quickly, the reason why you can't hear anything in the bloopers or in my videos is because the MIDI doesn't make any sound. MIDI essentially is sending signals into my preamp, into my laptop, and then through Logic, I'm choosing the sound that those signals make. So I can choose the sound to be a harpsichord or a guitar or a bass. And that's why in the bloopers of my videos, you just hear my fingers hitting the keys, which is being picked up by the mic, but you don't actually hear the sound of the piano or the guitar or whatever sound I choose to make it. So this is what I see now, this is all bought like last week, I've got a desk, I've got my MIDI keyboard and it's just downsized basically. I have the Nectar XI61, it's basically the small MIDI keyboard, it's perfect, I really love the sensitive keys, I spent ages reading reviews on Amazon trying to find the best one and so far I've been really happy with this. This is the new interface that I'm using, it's the Duet 2 by Apogee. I love this thing, I love it, the sound quality is so good. And I'm still using my same old broken mic, which is doing the job. I mean, it's what I'm recording this on right now, it sounds fine. I just need to get a mic stand for that now. And then underneath I obviously have, look at my nice plant, I have my sustain pedal. Now we're moving on to the video recording equipment. So this is a Canon 700D body with a Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter lens. The lens is actually Che's and he kindly lets me borrow it when I film my YouTube videos, so thank you Che. If you're gonna buy a camera, I would really say invest in the lens rather than the body because I think that that makes more difference. And then this is a light. Um, I, this costs about 20 quid from Amazon. I don't use it that much, but it's good just to have in case you're ever filming late and you need to just light yourself a little bit better. And now it is time for the exciting or maybe boring part, depending on what you're interested in. This is the vocal audio recording software. This is Logic Pro 10. It costs about 140 pounds in the app store. If you don't have this, then I would suggest using GarageBand. Firstly, I'm gonna show you some plugins that are available within the Logic Pro software that you can use. And then I'm gonna come on to the plugins that I use, which are external of the program and I, and I have bought them. So when you open up Logic Pro and you get an audio track, it will come as a blank track there's absolutely nothing on it and it will sound really dead 
And then if you go into the library, which is the key command Y, and you find the natural vocal, that is the sound that I used to use on my vocals. It gives you a channel EQ, which I would suggest changing whether you're male or female and finding what works for you. A very simple compressor, and it gives you reverb. For the piano sounds, the plugin that I still use, um, and actually probably the video that I uploaded last week will have been the first video where I don't use this plugin, uh, was the Steinway Grand Piano, which is simply, you know, in the pianos. They have a couple different sounds, but the Steinway is definitely my favorite. In editing my vocals, there's actually only two external plugins I use. One of those is CLA Vocals, which I got in a Waves bundle, and the other is Valhalla Reverb. The Valhalla Reverbs are really good quality. They only cost 50 US dollars, which is about 30 pounds. I would really suggest just buying them. And in this part of the video, I'm not gonna go into it too much. I would suggest just pausing the video so you can copy the settings that I use and in the order that I show them. So first in the channel strip, I have uh, the Logic plugin of the channel EQ. Then I have the CLA vocals. I only have compression and reverb on here and I turn the output up a little bit. So the channel strip here actually outputs out to another track, it's on bus five, and there I have the Valhalla Vintage Verb, and then I have a Logic Compressor, and as I said, just copy my settings. And that's everything for my vocal production that I use currently. The new piano sounds that I mentioned I'm going to start using earlier, they're part of a plugin called Contact, and I, rather than just getting Contact, I got the Native Instruments Complete 10 bundle. Now this bundle was very kindly given to me by someone, I didn't pay for it, but I do think that the price of it is about 400 pounds, which in my opinion is very expensive. And my advice to anyone would be, do not buy this unless you are serious about music production, unless you have the money, like you really don't need it for covers. But it just so happens that I have been fortunate enough to be given it, and so, you know, of course I'm gonna start using it. The sound that I love the most is the upright piano and I'm just going to demo them just so you can hear the difference between like top quality spec samples and plugins that you get on Logic. Okay, so that is the 500 pound, whatever, how much expensive plugin. And now you're gonna hear the Steinway Grand Piano, which comes free with Logic. And you can just hear the difference. I mean, there's not much that much of a difference, but you can hear it. And there you go, I hope you can hear the difference. It's not that much, but it does make a difference, whatever. That is everything that I use, that is everything you can use, and after that I will mix it, and then I'll go into mastering. I'm just gonna show you exactly what I use like I did before. I'll be honest, I really don't know that much about mastering, and I just use a preset and then I add something else on top. So I go into the legacy, I go in logic, and mastering, and then I just use the maximizer strong. And then from the waves bundle, I use the L1 plus ultra maximizer, and I just use the preset on there. And that's all I do for mastering. It's not that high tech, I would love to learn more about it, but it's something that, you know, it will come with time. From here, I will bounce out my audio and I will drag it into Final Cut Pro where I will sync it up with the video that I record. And I'm not going to show you how I edit my video because there really isn't anything to it. It's simply just cutting and placing and it's nothing special. I hope this has been helpful. I've tried to make it as informative as possible. Uh, and yeah, have a great day. I'll be back with a cover next week. And please give this a like and maybe hit subscribe. I think that's probably the first time I've ever said that. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>